Alrighty, so week five is pretty much done. Uh, I'm recording this, and actually I think I want to start by looking at the calendar just to remind us. Right, so we're on, I'm recording this on our day off of school, so to speak. But you know, I'm thinking like most people, we're probably many of us working today anyway. But as you can see on Monday, we have a holiday. So I always move items forward one day. But the impact of this is that you don't get as much time to finish this work. So, you know, work ahead accordingly. So uh, there's a group of you that are working ahead and I really appreciate that. Uh, Cause then you find things that I can update uh, that might've been a little amiss either because things change very common or there was just some clarification needed. So having said that, um, I went ahead today and released uh, week eight uh, and I'll probably release nine because here's the deal for a nine week online, well, nine week class period, we are uh, now more than halfway through it. Okay, so it's clipping along really well. Uh, the thing I wanted to clarify this week was and is the project um, zero draft. And you guys uh, reading your comments, seems like most of you got. I think there was some confusion, and, and this is okay, about, and, and here's the deal, we're working on this uh, in the coming weeks, so it'll become more clear, but it's also worth just communicating that on, oh, that's on the content strategies, sorry, that on the project itself, um, and this is important that I clarify this, right? So when I talk about the idea uh, in here that you can use you know, the course content. Some of you may choose to do that. And some of you, and this is what I saw many of you more interested in, which is why I started this last semester, is actually giving you the option to do a more personal, uh, often called a vanity site, or maybe a site for somebody else. I think I saw at least one or two people interested in helping somebody in their life build a site. That's fine as well. Um, and I think, you know, so anyway, that, that clarification here, uh, as far as the uh, to choose a personal site. One person had actually asked about doing a combination of the two, but I think unless I have a compelling reason, I'd like to see you take one direction or the other uh, around that. And then just to clarify, and I'll show you the one I did last semester that you're going to see me build, because again, m most of the instructional stuff I'm just rolling from last semester. And last semester, you'll hear me say that, you know, that you have to do the organization of the class content, but I've added this since. So just know that, right, the attendance videos are the most current. So as you hear me talking about this here, if you hear something different as you roll through the week, you know, either post it on the chat, which has been great, or ask me about it if you want clarification. But just know that when I talk about, you know, an alternative, I am actually going to allow you to do that, even though in the video sometimes I say I'm considering it, I actually do. So um, this is the site that I built last time. And so when we talk about these categories, it's really your menus are a way to organize, is a categorical way of organizing the content. So you give, you know, categories. So I did a personal site just because I hadn't done one in a while. And I've done one organizing the class content in the past. So uh, th so in my case, you know, I say before between four and five menu items. So if you do five, then you don't have to have as many pages within each one. Okay. So just know that's the clarification for a total of 21 pages. And it's really only on the main page that I want you to write something unique from you. And the rest of it can be gleaned from other sources. And I think that was my one concern here about, and not concern, but just, you know, hey, if you're going to do your own personal one, just know that you're going to have to get content from somewhere. But there's probably places you can glean that content, either maybe off social media or somewhere else. Because uh, the idea is not to have you write a lot of content. The idea is for you to learn how to build a site of some stuff substance here. Okay, that's really the goal. Okay, um, so having said that, um, I'm going to pull back here and just look at where we're at rolling into week six. And actually, I think I'm going to do this too, is I like to roll these as we complete weeks. It just makes, at this point, a little easier to scroll down 
into the week that we're working in. And I graded this morning um, this work that you finished last, oh no, yeah, this work you finished last night. So this was great. It seems like a couple of you had issues with the branch and once you've created the branch pushing it, the one skill I would hope you all either take away or have already um, developed is searching, right? So, so one thing, you know, like if you were using, if you had issue with the git branch, so git, right, um, branch push, right, to remote or something like that, and then read through, right, because there's, you're not the first person that's probably run into that, and I think this one right here, even though it's a little bit older, and that's the other thing is GitHub has changed as well, and you might read through some of this and go, oh, well, there is another command that I need to give it when I'm pushing a branch to the remote. And here's the deal, is that on VS Code, if you watch carefully, it VS Code, and in this case it's not VS Code, the terminal inside VS Code, will give you much better um, output as far as helping you figure out what you've done wrong. So the two skills I want you to think about is A, searching, right? So search because A, you're not going to be the first person and, and B, just holding that skill is great. But also pay attention to when you're working in VS Code to the messages that you get when you try to do something because on that git push, there, there was some output content that you actually just had to copy and paste uh, to get that to work. So just be conscious of that, okay? All right, so um, as we roll into week six, you're looking for a template. And, and here's the thing I want to give you the heads up on, right? So on the um, course that we did, he was looking at Bootstrap version three. And if you're going to choose a vert Bootstrap vert template that's five or four, sorry, four is the more current. So let me just say this clearly, Bootstrap. Right. So if we go to Bootstrap and look at it, you can see that there's definitely different versions up here. Right. So uh, version three is still out there, and and from you from this, you can see that the versions four are getting more and more updates. And this was the first one out, so getting the latest one has obviously been better than the older versions. But just know that you know if you get the a template that's based on a more current uh, Bootstrap you um, just might run into some differences and just have to on the fly figure out uh, what that is because, and I will give you this FYI, when you're finding a template and then you're copying it and then you're getting to know it, these two items right here are what I consider really core to helping you work through Project Zero. The more detail you can uh, glean the more in knowledge you can get about how that template is set up the better you're going to be able to implement this and change it for your own particular needs okay and then we end up with uh, this week actually um, building right building your site from the template and this is where I really want you to go through and not necessarily copy the whole thing and if you're not sure what I mean that's okay you'll get there okay but just keep that in mind so this is a really important week. Uh, I know we always say that, but it really is. All right, so I'm not going to move forward ahead of that because I think that's this is a chunky week. I look forward to you know helping wherever I can. Where I want to end this video today is talking about something that several of you have run into, and I just want to say this because I've been saying for weeks now, and you, I suspect, have heard me say it is don't change things now from the web interface. If you do do that, you're going to create conflicts. And now the thing is you can resolve these conflicts, you just have to take a couple of other steps. So I thought what I would do today is actually show you how you resolve this in case you run into it. And just for your own knowledge, right, is to know how to do this. So I have my, um, <coughs> actually in this case it's this branch right here, the public, sorry, my public repo open locally. And I'm just going to make, right, a uh, local change doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be an actual change to the markdown file, but now I have a change right here in my public. So if I do a git status, right, I'm going to see that that file is changed, you know, and so I'm going to do git add, right, and so I'm going to do a git commit m minor change, 
So I have it committed locally, but I haven't pushed it yet, right? I only have that change local. So what's going to happen if I go out to the to my actual uh, public repo? I find that same file, and that was a file I just did, right? Okay, and I edit it from here. Or the other example is if you upload something, any change, whether that be a change to a file or an upload to that repo, then makes what is on the web different than what's locally and it will throw an error We won't be able to push right so I'm going to say web change right because in this case right I and I can take the defaults here but I'm just going to commit that change so now what I have is I have a situation where what's out on the web is different than what I have locally so when I go to do a git push, and actually I should actually probably increase that text just a little bit so you can see this, right? It's going to go, uh-uh, can't do it, right? Fatal error, boom, boom, boom. So how do you fix this? So you, there's a couple ways, but the most simple way is just to do a git pull. And so git pull brings information from the remote repo local. And then what you get is this. And if you just, and this seems like a lot of content, but basically it's saying, hey, you know, this is your local change. This was the web change. Which do you want to keep? Do you want to accept current change, accept incoming, accept both? Compare, right, changes in more detail. So you can just, I could accept both, right? If I accept both, then I'm going to have that here, right? So now, Right, so now can I push? Well, I now have another situation where I have to, let me just clear, where I actually have to resolve, because now I have, not resolve, I've already resolved, now I had a modification. So git add star. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually roll through here, just so I don't have to do minor change, right? And then git push. So now that push will work fine, okay? And it's working. So now if I come back over here, what happens is, Right? I have both changes here. So just know you shouldn't update any any ever <laughs> um, from the web interface. And I don't care if it's a different file or a different, you know, a subdirectory or even a branch. You shouldn't do it because you're going to cause conflicts. But if you do do that, I just want you to know there's a way to fix it. I just hadn't shown students how to do it. So I thought, well, I'll take this opportunity to actually do that. Okay, so let me know if that's helpful. Um, I find it um, just one of the things as we continue forward that maybe adding to your knowledge belt will help you. Okay, all right, have a great uh, break if you get one, and I will talk to you soon.